Good design. Hello, <laughs> everyone. We all know the uh, famous uh, Chazal that Rashi begins this week's Parsha with Ma'in on Shemitah Itzel Har Sinai. It says uh, that the by uh, Dabei Hashem on Moshe Bahar Sinai Lamar, and then he told them the mitzvah of Shemitah. So why is Shemitah? Uh, connected to Har Sinai. So Rashi quotes the Medrash <clears throat> that says that the Torah wanted to emphasize that all the mitzvahs are from Sinai and that therefore even this individual mitzvah of uh, Shemitah is Mehar Sinai and that, that all the uh, mitzvahs have a divine authorship and authority. But if you think about it, that really begs the question. We're still left, so then why did he pick Shemitah? Could have picked any mitzvah, and we would say, Ma, that this mitzvah is Misenai, so call it Misenai. What was it inherent in Shemitah that makes the lesson, so to speak, uh, more direct, uh, more applicable, more understandable. So there are many uh, streams of thought uh, that the Mephorshim say regarding this Medrash, regarding this Rashi. I, I saw something that's uh, very original. I'm always afraid of original because if it wasn't said before, then uh, maybe that's not it. On the other hand, uh, the Torah uh, uh, exalts creativity, and in every generation there is originality. It's door door v'dor shov, door door v'chachomov. So uh, the idea that uh, was presented, I don't want to get the the uh, safer into trouble, so I'm not going to tell you where. <laughs> Shemitah is different than any other mitzvah in the Torah. Because Shemitah is a mitzvah that never was fulfilled. In the whole history of Klal Yisrael, from the time of Moshe in the Midbar till today, the mitzvah of Shemitah in the Torah has never been fulfilled. Uh, the Gemara points it out that the uh, 70 years of Golos was because of Shemitah and because of Yovel. In the Ba'is region, it wasn't observed. In the times of the Ba'is region, it wasn't observed. Before the Beis Amigdash was built, at the time of uh, the uh, Shoftim, it also wasn't observed for technical reasons that the Gemara discusses. Then they went into Golis and Boville, so it certainly wasn't observed. They didn't live in Eretz Israel. Then they came back in the Bayashani, the 420 years of the second day, something this. So the Gemara teaches us that it never was observed. For whatever reasons, it was never observed. Then they went into Golis. We went into Golis again, long Golis, where uh, the, uh, the majority of the Jewish people never lived in the land of Israel, never saw the land of Israel. So then it certainly wasn't observed. So we would say that it's a uh, it's a, a mitzvah that uh, has no practicality. 
It never was observed for thousands of years. So here, uh, there's a, an historical idea here, which I think sheds light uh, on a lot of things. Uh, the Rabbonin wanted to make a memorial to Shemitah, even though it wasn't observed. Even though Shemitah was not Midoraisa, because you needed a majority of the Jewish people living in Eretz Yisrael. Some say you needed to base some English and all sorts of technicalities. Nevertheless, the concept of Shemitah, the concept Kili Kola Oretz, Mishov Soretz, Shabbos Lashem, that concept is so uh, glorious and so applicable that we cannot just ignore it. We cannot say that the Torah didn't intend us to know it and to appreciate it. So therefore, the, the Rabbonin made Shemitah mit Rabbonin. That even though the technicalities of Shemitah mit Torah are not present and are not being fulfilled for whatever reasons, but nevertheless, Jews who live in Eretz Israel should observe the agricultural laws of Shemitah mit Ramanan as a rabbinic reminder. Part of the idea of all the mitzvahs of mit Rabbanan was to remind us of the uh, basic idea that the Torah wanted to communicate. So even if all of the circumstances were not exactly present, but the idea was present, and many times the idea alone is sufficient. So it really took till uh, our time, meaning till the 19th century, for uh, this to come to into any uh, practical uh, uh, application in Jewish life. And in the uh, in the 16th century, in the 1500s, when there a substantial uh, Jewish settlement occurred in Eretz Israel because of the Golay Sorad, so the question arose: Should they observe Shemitah? Whether Shemitah the Rabbanan apply to them or not? And there are different ideas in the poskin. Uh, and uh, but as a practical matter, again, it hardly applied because Jews didn't own the land and they didn't raise the crops, and uh, therefore. Uh, it became a, a, an esoteric uh, scholastic idea. The change came in the Jewish world in the 19th century when uh, Baron Rothschild, Edmund the Rothschild, uh, created uh, his colonies. He created 39 colonies in the today they would call them settlements, God forbid. <laughs> Uh, throughout the country. And he created the Carmel Wine Corporation and a winery. And he created uh, uh, a company to distribute fruits and oranges, etc. So uh, he began his work in 1892. I'm sorry, no, 1872. In 1879 was a Shemitah year. Now, there's a machoikis in the Gaonim as to the count of, of the Shemitah. That's what makes it so fungible. That's why the, the search for Hatterin was not felt to be uh, uh, something that was wrong because there are too many strikers in the whole thing, too many doubts. So how do we know when the Shemitah year is? 
the first of all, like is in the Gemara, whether the Yovel year counts as year 50, and then you begin the next Shemitah cycle in the 51st year, or whether year 50 is year one of the next Yovel, of the next uh, Shemitah Rev. So it's a, uh, it's clouded. So there was a, there was a consensus of the Gonim in Eretz Yisrael as to what year should be. The most of the postgame held that that year had the potential to be the Shemitah year. So in 1879, the, the farmers who uh, worked in the vineyard of uh, Baron Rothschild and uh, in his colonies, they wrote them a letter and they said that this year is Shemitah and we don't work on Shemitah, so just send the check. The Baron was very upset. You know, what do you mean? What do you mean they're not gonna work? I mean, for, for a year, a year and a half, uh, the project is going to uh, lie fallow. Nothing will happen, and I should pay for it. So he threatened to close all the colonies. He's going to—he's going out of the business. He doesn't need it. But Shmuel Moalever, who was the Rav of Bialystok and who was a uh, driving force behind the Chove Vetzion organization, which was allied with the Baron. So he said, that's gonna be a disaster. We're trying now for the first time in hundreds of years to bring Jews there to soil, to have a Jewish society. We were buying land from the Arabs. And the, air, and the Baron is our mainstay, and he's not gonna be, he's gonna quit. So we have to find a way out. And he was a great Talmud Chacham, he was a great Gon. He's buried in Masqueret Batia here, which is one of the Baron's colonies. And uh, he uh, went to the great Rabbonim in Lita, especially to Rabbi Yitzchok Honan, Specter, the Rav of Kovna, but also Rabbi David Tevel Minsker, who was uh, uh, the uh, chief student of Halosian, Rabbi Yisef Freimer. I mean, we're talking about great Gaonim, great Poskin, and they came up with the idea of a Heter Mechira. They said, uh, since Shemitah of Zman in their time, they said, is Midrabanan. And since there are many doubts as to what year exactly the Shemitah is, so we can find a, uh, a loophole, uh, just as we do with Chomet and Pesach, the same process of Mechiras Chomet and Pesach to a non Jew. So here we have Mechiras Eretz Israel, the Jewish land to a non Jew. This heter, which was uh, promulgated for 1879 and renewed in 1886 and in 1893 by uh, met the opposition of the Nitziv, Rabbi Naftali Tzvi Yehuda Berlin, who also was from the Chover Veitzion, and he was the Rosh Hashiva of Halosha. And his objection was, that you're not allowed to sell Jewish land and heritage soil to non-Jews. The love of the Torah, lo sechonein. Lo titen lahem chaniyo bekarka. Don't give them a right to own your land. So if that's the case, he said in order to avoid an Isser de Rabbanan, which, was, which is Shemitah, you're going to violate an Isra Daraisa, which is Lo Sechonein. And therefore, he said the, there's no basis for the Heter. 
the Rabbonim in Yerushalayim, Yerushalayim is a fierce place, always has been. The Rabbonim in Yerushalayim said, we don't want to discuss whether or not the Heter is valid or not. We say that the rabbis in Lithuania have no right to mix in with matters regarding Eretz Yisrael. Eretz Yisrael belongs to us. We're here. We're the Mar de Asra. We're the ones that live here. So the Vizal Honan and Kovna, good, he's a great goal, right? And, 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 and Lovitavu Minsker, they're very, uh, we have great going, but they have no jurisdiction here. And therefore they said there's no head to. So they came up with their own uh, loophole, which was Yuvu Nofri, <coughs> that you buy produce in the seventh year um, that's not grown by Jews. So in, in 1879, most of the produce in the country was not grown by Jews. So that was a, uh, 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 an easy, logical way out. The Arabs sold you their, uh, their produce. But there was no idea of the Hatem Mechira. The issue became greater in the early 20th century when Rav Kook became the Rav in Yaffa. So when Rav Kook became the Rav in Yaffa, he also was the Rav for all of the Baron, the Baron Rothschild's colonies. They went, there was one package. And he wrote a famous sefer defending the Heter Mechira. It's called Shabbos Oretz, which is probably one of the classical foreign on Hilchus Shemitah that exists until today. And he defended the Heter. And later on, when he became the Rav Hiroshi, first of, of Palestine then, so he, uh, since he was in charge of the chief rabbinate, he instituted that Heter into the policy of the chief rabbinate. And it remains until today that every Shemitah there's a Heter Mechira, et cetera. There are a lot of controversy regarding it. And the uh, economic and uh, agricultural scene has changed dram dramatically, drastically from what it was in the 1800s. And therefore it's a real problem that we grasp with today. So therefore, Rashi said that Shemitah was the example of Sinai, that even though here's a mitzvah that never was observed, and a mitzvah that has so many technicalities that maybe we cannot observe it in the Torah. And the most we can do is have a remembrance, but it plays a central role in Jewish life. We're coming out of a Shemitah year, right? So we remember last year. Special store, special this, special that. So that's to teach us that all mitzvahs are misinai, even if we don't think it's practical for us today, even if we're not able to translate it into behavior. And therefore, that's what Rashi means. The Medrash says, my minion Shemitah, it's a Sinai. Ma shmita, ma kola mitzvos mesinai, af shmita mesinai, and it applies to all mitzvos in the Torah that that should be our attitude towards it. Rabbi Chanan Yeben Akashi Omer Ratzah Gorish Borchul is Akos in Israel. Lefich Achir Bolahem Torah Mitzvos Shenemar Aranoi Chafetz Mamsit Koyagil Zanoni Adin. Thank you.